Hebrews 13 verse 3 says, Remember those in prison as if you were their fellow prisoners, and those who are mistreated as if you yourselves were suffering. Hebrews 11:37. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. Our body, the body of Christ, has been enduring persecution as uh, never before. And one of our beloved guests returned to us, Canon Andrew White. You know, when he was sent to Baghdad, that was a, a struggling Anglican church there. He built it up to a congregation of 6,000. So many have fled because of ISIS and the recent uh, atrocities that are happening there. When the Canon came into this studio and saw the footage of the children, he, he nearly wept. My children, my children, he said. Here's a portion of our visit with him recently. You know, the thing which is so terrible is that so many of our people fled Baghdad because they said Baghdad was too dangerous. There were bombs and attacks in Baghdad. So they fled back to the traditional Christian homeland, which was Nineveh. Mm the place where the miserable evangelist came by a submarine. <laughs> He's talking about Jonah in case you're wondering what that's all about. 700 years ago. The whale got him there. Yeah. And he succeeded in his mission. You, well, there, you said everyone in Nineveh is a Christian. 700 years later, another miserable man came, this time called Doubting Thomas. He told him, did you know your Messiah has come? And every one of them who believed in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob turned to Yeshua, Jesus. And until four months ago, Nineveh was all Christian. Wow. And one of the bishops said, last Sunday, there was no communion in Nineveh for the first time in 2,000 years. One, one day, only a few weeks ago, one of our men said, Abuna, Abuna, our father, our father, that's what they call me. He said, I'm so sorry, will Yeshua, will Jesus forgive me? I said, what's wrong, Elias? He said, Isis came into my house and they said to me, you have got to say you will follow Muhammad, that you will become a Muslim, otherwise we will kill all your children. And he said, I said it. I said those words. But he said, you know, Abuna, I love Yeshua. I love Yeshua. I said, Elias, Jesus knows you love him. Jesus knows you always love him. Two days later, the story was a lot worse. Isis came in and they said, Jamal, they said, we're not asking you, the father, anymore what you think, whether you will say the words. We're asking the children. They've got a choice. Either they say they follow Muhammad or they die. And the children held each other's hands and they said, we have always loved Yeshua. Yeshua has always loved us. We will never say anything against our Yeshua. They shot more dead. All four of the children were shot through the head. That's just an example of what our people have been going through. You're working with the Voice of the Martyrs, and they have wonderfully provided some uh, very recent footage for us. Voice of the Martyrs Canada is like no other organization in the world. 
It was there with us in Baghdad at the very beginning when things were really bad. They were there last week seeing what's happening to our refugees. And they are not some distant organization. They are part of us. Mm. They are our family. Well, let's take a look at just what is happening with some of our brothers and sisters in Iraq. 195 Christian families, that's 825 people, along with 25 Yazidis families, came here to Hazani. They gathered from eight neighboring villages. They were chased from their homes in places like Mosul in Karakash because of Islamic State, also known as ISIS. When they came, they received Bible Plus packs from the Voice of the Martyrs. <laughs> And suddenly a guy coming from in the bus from ISIS people and just take her, yeah, take her daughter from her. And she started start crying and her husband didn't see her. He said, like, what's happened? And she said, like, they take my daughter. They come in the night when Kurdish force withdraws from our areas. So uh, the ISIS come in the night, in the, about 3 or 4 a.m. You had 18 families in your church, 70 people, ISIS came, you had to disperse, people left. You started the church, you were the church planter. How did you feel when the congregation all had to flee? He said that was so difficult. He said, when, when you plant a church, and I spent the whole time since 2006, built that church, built that home. I felt this is something from me, this, like this, my body. was so difficult, especially when you see people just leave their home walking. This is, this is my people, this is my nation. And I, I just felt like, I'm so sorry. When we heard the news of this terrible situation, our hearts started to cry for you, and we started to pray very hard. We told people about your story, and they had tears coming down. And we asked them, please, not only pray, but give some money so we can help. Thousands of Christians have fled here to Iraqi Kurdistan, having left behind jobs, homes, and in some cases separated from family members. Many of them escape with just their lives. These Christians are now facing an uncertain future. Christians from around the world, including Canada, have been coming to the rescue of these refugees. Christian refugees are living in tents, churches, and for 200 families, that's around 1,500 people, have found shelter in an unfinished mall in Erbil. While they are grateful for the help, they really want to go home, but realize that won't be a possibility anytime soon. Reporting from Erbil, Iraq, for 100 Huntley Street, I'm Greg Musselman of The Voice of the Martyrs Canada. We need peace. We need protection. We need provision, so we have got to give and help our people. It's just so expensive. It used to be 177,000 a month. Now it's over a hundred thousand dollars every week, just providing for our people. I'm surprised. St. George's, your church, is still is still up and running right it's there in still Baghdad. Functioning. And, and medical clinic, every, is, clinic still is still functioning, going? school is still functioning. ISIS have not moved into Baghdad yet. So we have a lot to pray for. And you have a website that will keep us apprised of what you're doing. I do where almost daily updates and people can sign up to my updates or my Facebook updates and see every day what is really happening. Uh, throughout the year of 2014, we have faithfully tried to present to you stories about people who are walking with Jesus Christ in a very intense way. People of the light. 
people who are leading, people who have great courage that have been empowered by the Holy Spirit, transformed by the gospel and believe the word of God from Genesis to Revelation. Our brothers and sisters that God has uniquely positioned in places where there's an Ebola outbreak, where there is a Ukrainian crisis and where there is disarray and madness in the Middle East. In the midst of all of that, there are Christ followers leading and making a difference. And you in 2014 allowed those stories to get here because of your incredible faithfulness and prayer and financial support. We thank you for standing with us and we look forward to bringing you more stories about life change that happens with the gospel of Jesus Christ in 2015.